Good morning, and uh, it's a it's a light news day. It's Saturday, we're eleven days out from the start of the season, and we're again we're at a point where teams are trying to sneak guys through waivers. Uh, where you'll have a guy, you'll say, you know what, he's not going to make this team. We're going to waive him now. We're going to waive him now, not a week and a half from now. One teams are like, hey, we've got injuries, and suddenly we need that guy. Uh, Sparks and Dansk, two goaltenders, Garrett Sparks, Oscar Dansk, on waivers from these guys, the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, a lot of depth in net right now, and I don't see any reason why Sparks won't clear. The reason being, Louis Demang cleared. And when I saw that news this morning, I thought, you know, maybe it's time to do a video on how disposable backup goaltenders tend to kind of be. And it, it's it's sad because we as fans love the backup goalie or always cheer for the underdog. And very often the backup goalie is the most popular player on the team. But it seems like it's a very recyclable, very replaceable position. And when a team loses a backup goalie, we will often, you know, analyze it and talk about it a ton. And and nothing really comes of it in most cases. Um, Toronto, they've placed uh, Kazmir Kaskasuo on waivers, so there's another goaltender on waivers for you. And other than that, the rest of them seem to be your standard waiver wire guys. Um, players who are middling, probably not going to make it, probably didn't really have much of a chance in camp anyways. Uh, looking on the Vancouver side of things, Landon Ferraro has been released from his uh, tryout, which is understandable there wasn't room for him uh, i i still think he ends up in utica somehow but uh it, it is surprising to see and when you look at some of these guys who are on waivers like for instance spencer martin uh tampa bay he was a third round draft pick and he's a goaltender that is kind of sort of not talked about as a future nhl goaltender um another one that stood out to me was columbus put paul bittner on waivers and i remember when bittner was drafted and he was seen as potentially being a steal in that draft and and that was only in 2015, so it is surprising how quickly these things can change. Um, along with Ferraro, the Canucks have also sent down Yu Levy, who hasn't played a game in the preseason. And I think there's more going on with his knee injury than the Canucks are letting on. I think that we're looking at a situation where Ole won't be playing to start the season at all, and and we'll see where this ends up. But I think his, his injury is worse than, than they're reporting. Uh, Brogan Rafferty, Josh Tevez also get sent down. I thought they both played well, actually. I think they'll both be early call-ups when the Canucks' annual um, parade of injuries starts. I think they'll get called up pretty quick. Um, of the two, I like Tevez better as the all-around defenseman. However, uh, Rafferty, decent shot as well. So we'll see who they call up first. Yasek gets sent down as well, and Cole Lind. And I thought Lind looked better this year in camp than last year. I think Lind's closer to becoming an NHLer on some level. Although I don't know that he ever gets past being a fringe NHLer. I still think there's there's going to be some games for him as soon as this year. And one thing that they're already starting to talk about is with so many players that would need waivers to go down, Adam Gaudet doesn't need waivers to go down, so he may find himself in Utica as well because he doesn't need to clear waivers to go down. It just makes sense. It's unfair that some players are going to go through that. You're going to see as the weeks go along, players get sent down to the American League, and you think, why? And it's going to be because they don't have to worry about waivers. They don't have to put the guy on a into the system where any GM anywhere could say, oh, I'll take him, and you just get like some cash back, and that's it. Um, Nick Suzuki. Uh, today, keep an eye on him if you're a Habs fan, if you want to see him make the team. He will be playing, apparently, on the wing, on a line with uh, Deno, and uh, as well with... Yeah, there's no E in that, Shannon. There's no E in Deno. Now it looks like it's two words. That just, that's not... No, we're not going to... No, nah, come on. Come on. See, I write stuff on the board, and then I look at it, and I go, that's not right. So he'll be playing on a wing with Deno at center, and Tatar uh, playing on the other wing against Ottawa. And this is... This is being heralded as this is his chance to make it, at least according to, I believe, a Sportsnet, uh, that Suzuki shot at getting a, a, a roster spot. May require him to play on the wing rather than down the middle. So we'll see. Um, I have my fingers crossed for the kid. Uh, I hope he does make it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, unrelated to hockey, related to something on the other channel, I just wanted to thank humanity for the fact that less than 200 people tried to storm Area 51. It was a terrible idea. It was a joke. And I'm glad that everybody, including myself, who said, yeah, I'm going, 
knew got got the joke. There are about two hundred people who either didn't get the joke or just thought eh, probably free booze. All right, and last note of the day. I said it was a slow news day. Uh, Yermer Yager scored a goal for Kladno, uh, who have been put back into the, the top-tier Czech League. They had been relegated in 2014. Now they're back in the top tier. They lost the game 7-4, but Yager scored, and he's a partial owner, and he's a manager, and he does a little bit of everything, including score goals at 47 years of age, making the rest of us look bad. Thanks, Yermer. Uh, keep in mind, Yager has said all along he wants to keep playing hockey till he's in his 50s. He is three years away from doing exactly that. So congratulations to him. And no, I don't see him ever coming back to the NHL. Um, and, and it's one of those things where when, when Calgary cut him, I, I got it. I understood. But I also understand why there were so many people who wanted to see him break Gordie Howe's record of games played. And, you know, there were people who really, truly love love Jeremy Yager. And, and I get it. Um, if you want to see him play, though, you'd have to go and watch his games in Gladno. So there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts regarding the waiver wire and, and when do you think we're going to see the first person claimed and who do you think it's going to be? And no, I, I don't think, I think Sparks clears right now. I'm just surprised Vegas didn't wait a little bit longer to tip their hand. I thought that Sparks played really well in the action I'd seen of him, but so did Dansk, to be honest. Uh, Oscar Dansk may very well be one of those diamonds in the rough that plays a, a decent career just never really gets a shot at an NHL job. That happens with goaltenders as well. I could definitely do a video regarding the, the the recycling of backup goalies and you know how some of them just never really get that shot at an NHL job because you have 62 jobs and way more than 62 qualified guys for that job. So let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing Ray 3 just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.